Okay, I'm Joe Kent, and uh, we're here with Matt Kibbe. He's the president and CEO of Freedom Works. Welcome, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me, Joe. Now, your organization is called Freedom Works, and uh, I just think that's a great uh, name for an organization. It reminds me of like a, a machine, like that it's working, but also um, reminds me of the question: Does freedom work? And uh, that's something I ask myself a lot. Um, does freedom work? Well, I think freedom is the answer to almost any problem you have, as long as you understand that um, gravity is gravity and supply and demand exists and you can't wish those away um, through magical government programs. But freedom is a solution to all sorts of problems we face, not just here in Hawaii, but, but across the world. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to look at a few different areas of life and ask, does freedom work? So what about um, the post office? Would freedom work there, do you think? There's really absolutely no rationale for the post office anymore. And, we, you know, we used to point to FedEx and, and the privatized expedited mailings. But with email, what exactly is the purpose of, uh, I don't even know what a stamp costs anymore. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, we don't have to repeal the post office. We could just allow for real competition because that's what protects this quasi-government monopoly. And, and people would clearly be, they, they, you could demonstrate quickly the opportunities and lower costs, and, and given our budget situation, we, we can't afford to subsidize this this dinosaur postal system. How about, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm picking on the things that we all love. How about the public library? I mean, um, yes, it's it, it, freedom's a great idea, but uh, hey, it's nice to have free books. I mean, isn't that freedom? Yeah, I, th I mean, I think, again, the, the Internet has changed so much of everything. It's very easy to get access to good information now um, and you don't need you don't you don't really need a library the way you used to hmm. um, what about people who say that well we need big government to help the poor and, and some people are needy and and some people um, you, uh, and we need to tax the rich because they've got all the money and what do you say to, to that argument the, the bleeding heart argument well certainly there's there are government policies that are big-hearted but, but wrong-headed, and it's one thing to wish something to be. Wouldn't it be great if we could create a perfect safety net for, for all poor people that genuinely needed that help and no one would abuse the system? But the problem is government doesn't work that way. Government has its own marketplace, and it's all driven by incentives, and there's always a gaming of the system. There's always politicians that use programs to control people, to actually hold them down, lock them into a program, um, like Social Security. This, this is a, a question of control and dependence. So the challenge for those of us that believe in freedom is explaining the alternative to an empty promise. I'm going to protect you in retirement. Here's Social Security. We know it's not true. You can look at the numbers and see that, that the numbers won't be there for younger generations. But how do you explain freedom and compound interest and the opportunity of, of taking a risk and, and controlling your own destiny that's a little more challenging, and I think we need to figure out the language to do that. So we're not against retirement security. We're against a one-size-fits-all system that simply doesn't work. We're kind of talking about um, freedom and, and libertarianism, and um, do you consider yourself to be a libertarian? I do. Okay. I do. Um, right now, there's a, um, a lot of talk about libertarians um, in the world right now, certainly more than there was 10 years ago, I'd say. And... Um, especially after um, Ron Paul ran and, uh, and lost, and, and now a lot of Republicans are asking questions about libertarians. Um, do you think there's a place for uh, libertarianism in mainstream America? I do, and I think there is a trend, uh, certainly in the Republican Party, certainly in public opinion. Um, Ron Paul is a good indication of that. Uh, Rand Paul's filibuster is a story I love to tell because there was a time at the beginning of that filibuster, that mainstream media, the Republican establishment, the Democratic establishment, everybody was making fun of Rand Paul. They're like, you're going to make a fool out of yourself. Mm -hmm. And this, keep in mind, this was the ultimate insider institution. This is what Strom Thurmond used to stop a Republican civil rights bill in 1957, ultimate insider tactic to protect the status quo. Rand Paul flipped it on its head, and he did so because there's a community of people armed with social media like Twitter, and we were literally able to change the conversation, talk about civil liberties, talk about limits on executive power, what a radical idea that is. Um, and 
by the end of that 13 hours, the same mainstream media outlets who were ridiculing Rand Paul declared him the new head of the GOP. That's the power of decentralization. That's the power of, of the ideas of freedom. Is there any place in the world where freedom doesn't work? No. Freedom works everywhere. As long as there are people and our strivings and our desire to do better for ourselves and our families and to continue to discover, to continue to fail, to pick ourselves back up, that is the process of freedom. That's the, the beauty of what Hayek called the spontaneous order. It's an opportunity for all of us. And I think it works uh, I think it works everywhere, despite cultural differences, despite uh, economic differences, the opportunities there. Great. Well, thanks so much for coming to Maui and uh, visiting with us. Matt Kibi from FreedomWorks. Thanks, Joe.